Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. This is 10 exam prep questions with full audio explanations. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to learn all about these concepts step by step. Before we get started, if you'll hit that subscribe button, it'll help us share and impact more people. Now let's talk about the best way to use this resource. So I'm going to read the questions one at a time. Right after I'm done reading them, pause the video and try to answer it yourself. And then unpause the video and you can watch a full detailed explanation. Let's get to it. What is the total demand for 25 RV sites that are equipped with 20 and 30 amp setups? The correct answer is 37,800. And to find this one, we're going to head to 551.73. And it's going to let us know for RV sites that are equipped with a 20 and a 30 amp setup, that you have to calculate it at a minimum of 3,600 VAs per site. But we can't stop there. We have to head to the table and we can actually apply a demand factor for this load. So we take our 3,600 per site, multiply it by our 25 sites, and that gives us 90,000 VAs. Now we can go down to our table and check the demand factor for 25, and it ends up being 42%. So we take our original load multiplied by our demand factor, and that gives us a new reduced load of 37,800. Great job. What does the N in THHN stand for? The correct answer is nylon coated. So this is a picture that you can get at electricalcodecoach.com under free resources. And this is something that you can use to help you remember. This breaks them all down. How to find it in the code book is something that I actually want you to make a tab for. If you're allowed to make tabs in your state, if not, I just want you to go get familiar with the table. So you're going to head to table 310.4a and you're going to find THHN and then you would be able to find that it, it is equivalent to nylon coating. And when you get in there, you're going to learn all kinds of fun things about all the different types of wire, whether it's rated 75, 90, respectively, so on and so forth. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. What is the smallest metal square outlet box you would select for five number 12 conductors and three number 10 conductors? The correct answer is a four by one and a half. For this one, we're going to head to table 314.16b first, and we're going to find the cubic inch volume of each conductor. We start on the left-hand side and find a number 12 and come over to the cubic inch per conductor column, and we're going to find that it's 2.25. We have five of those conductors, so we bear that math out, and we get 11.25. We do the same process for the 10-gauge wires and end up with 7.5. We add those two together, and that equals 18.75 cubic inches that we have that we need to fill a box with. So now we're going to head to table 314.16a, and the first thing we're going to do is find our type of box. So our type of box is right here. Then we're going to come over to this middle column, the volume column, and we're going to go down and find a square box that just fits the conductors. And in this case, it's a four by one and a half. Great job. Carbon pipe rounding electrode shall be at least blank feet in length. The correct answer is eight. And for this one, we're going to use our keyword and index process. Think about me and you having a conversation about this question. If you were calling me on the phone, what would you be calling me about? You'd be calling me about grounding electrodes, wouldn't you? So I would start there. Start with G in the index. Head to grounding electrodes. And when we get there, it's one of these runaround situations. It tells us to see electrodes grounding. When we get there, we start looking for more keywords in our question. And this one's kind of tough. There's nothing about length or size. And really, the only thing that matches is made. And I really think this is kind of comical in the index. It just says made. That's why I threw a question mark next to it. But let's head there. So when we head to 250.50, we're going to start looking at our black bolt headings. Great, I feel like we're in the right section. 
and when we get to 250.52, we find exactly what we're looking for using our black bold heading method until we find something about rods or pipes. Sure enough, when we get there, we find it, and we find that it's required to be 8 feet. What is the secondary voltage of a transformer that has a 4 to 1 turn ratio and a primary voltage of 480? The correct answer is 120. This turns ratio is stating that for every 4 volts on the primary side, there is 1 volt on the secondary side as a result of the windings ratio. For every 4 coils of wire on the primary side, there is 1 coil of wire on the secondary side. To find out the secondary output, you would divide the primary voltage by 4 to find out what one unit of it is. We would take 480 divided by 4 and that equals 120. You can double check your work by dividing it back. 480 divided by 120 equals 4. This is a 120-240 step-down transformer. You can visit electricalexamcoach.com to learn all about this and many more subjects. Let's get to it. What is the voltage drop of a 200 amp circuit using 4 rot copper conductors that is 225 feet long on a 120 240 volt system? And the correct answer is A, 5.5. For this one, we're going to use our Ohm's Law formula, 2 kid over C mills. We're going to have 2 as our constant. Our K factor is going to be 12.9 this time because it's copper. And then we're going to have our current and our distance divided by the C mills. In order to get that information, we're going to head over to Chapter 9, Table 8. We're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our conductor. Then we're going to crumb over and we're going to get our C mills. After we bear out all our math, and this is what I love about formulas. Just plug in what you know and then spit out the answer. 2 multiplied by 12.9 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 225 divided by the circular mills of a 4 aught copper conductor is going to equal 5.48676 da 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 and it continues on. We're going to round up to 5.5 and call it a day. Let's get to it. X-ray equipment that will run for five minutes or longer. And it gives some options here. Now the correct answer is long time rating. I want to train you to start looking at things like this as a definition because we might go a different route. But if you didn't call this a definition, and if you did and you caught the, and you read the play that it was a definition, first you would head to Article 100 and see if it was there, and then you would head to the dot two section of the specific article that you wanted to be in. But let's imagine that you didn't, um, you know, read the play that it was a definition. So we're going to use our keyword index process. What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about X-ray equipment. So sure enough, we find X-ray in the index. But when we get there, there are no other keywords under it. So you could pick another keyword like equipment or so on, and you could go check in that part of the index. And that's exactly what I did. I went to equipment, didn't find anything about x-ray equipment. So it's like, now what do you do? And let me show you what I would do. The first thing I would do is when I was in x-ray in the index, it let me know that x-ray, the article was in 660. So I would head up to the table of contents. And I would go to 660, it's right in order, go to chapter 6, go to 660, and I would look and see if there were any other clues underneath of 660 that were keywords in my question. There's not. So really the only thing left to do at this point is to head to 660 and read every single black bold heading starting at the beginning of the article all the way through. Thankfully those specialty articles are very small. When you start this one, you start at the beginning of 660. And I do want to note, the other thing that going to the table of contents did for us is told us a page number. That's the beauty of the ta table of contents, is it tells you the page number that you're going to be on. So we knew to head to page 555. When we got there, we looked at the first few black bold headings. Sure enough, long time rating popped out, one of our four choices, and it was the definition we were looking for. X-ray equipment that will run for five minutes or longer. Now, there are many angles that you can tackle a question, and I want to teach you as many as possible. And I don't want to teach you just the answer. I want to teach you a way of thinking and a structure that will not only give you, give you the answer when you're, you know, you're testing, but will give you the answer when you're out in the field.
current pairing conductors installed inside of cable bus shall not be smaller than blank. The correct answer is 1i. So for this one, we're going to use our keyword and index process. I'm going to go to cable bus first in the index because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about what are we wiring up here? We're wiring up cable bus. Then under that heading, if there is anything in the index, I'm going to look at more keywords in my question. We could maybe use conductor or maybe current carrying if we got desperate, but let's start with conductors. Sure enough, we find conductors and it sends us to a code reference of 370.20. Let's head there and see if it's what we need. When we get there, we look at the black bold heading. It's looking promising. Then when we look down through there, we actually see one of our four answers pop out from the paragraph. We invest our time, slow down and read, and we select a one eye. What is the burial depth required for conductors in rigid metal conduit that is ran under a highway? The correct answer is 24 inches. So for this one, we're going to head to table 300.5. We're going to start on the left hand side and we're going to look for our location of wiring. Then we're going to come across and we're going to find our column, whether it's column one, two, three, or four. Then we're going to come down and tee off with how deep it's required to be. And in this case, it's 24 inches. What is the circular mills of a one ot wire? The correct answer is 105600. And we're going to find the answer to this in Chapter 9, Table 8. When we get there, we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our size of wire. Then we're going to come over and we're going to cross over to our circular mills. And when we're going to use things like this is when we're doing voltage drop calculations or if we're paralleling wires when we're doing grounding conductors.